here. It's really wonderful to see everybody. Uh, we were hoping for 100 people. 100 people signed up, so there's about 110 of us in here just now, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. But, uh, so my name's, my name's John Player, like the cigarettes. Uh, some of the younger folk won't know that, but uh, my grandfather died of lung cancer. He's buried in a grave in Glasgow, and his tomb looks like the his stone looks like the John Player uh, special packets, gold. On it. He died of lung cancer. He died of lung cancer in '55, which was the uh, age that so many men died uh, in Glasgow on the West Coast. So I I never met him. So this is personal. This is a personal. Uh, stuff this. So, I've named the ghetto defendant. It's not heroin or butt fast pity, nor not tear gas, nor baton charge that stops you taking the city. It's heroin pity. So, it's not by accident. It's not by accident after 1919 there was a quietism that uh, uh, date so ably, ably put forward, has moved from Scottish Labour Colleges to the, uh, to the WE and the uh, reformers of really, but, but it's not by accident, this is what uh, the proposition really is, you know. So, if uh, Gemma, Gemma and Alex and I are involved in a recovery group called the Sheer Learning for Democracy, and we teach critical other education, to look at the uh, structural issues beyond the 12-step program to look at uh, housing price and whose interest is it? And that's the question I want, and whose interest is it that we're all fucked? This is really <laughs> <laughs> this is the, Excuse the language, but let's get, let's get, you know, this is a dead anarchist, this is a dead anarchist, a Scottish anarchist, by the way. <laughs> but the thing is, that E.P. Thompson, but E.P. Thompson, I have to about E.P. Thompson, he called it the making of the English working class, his heroic, historic text, because the history of the Scottish working class is different. It's different. It's a different uh, class history. So, General, we'll hit that. That's the clash. The clash will get back to that hardcore uh, punk street age and uh, towards a less fucked up society. That's it. Uh, so there's now a kind of movement coming about about straight edge abstinent uh, anarchism. That if we want to make social revolution, we've got to get clean. So that uh, this is by Nick Riot Five, which I really, really <laughs> <laughs> Nick Riot Five. Where's you were here for? Okay, next one. <laughs> so the thing is here towards a less fucked up world. So Riots and anarchists starts. Struggle, which was really initiated by the Black Panthers. <coughs> capitalism plus dope equals genocide. So it's in the interest of the capitalist class that we are doped out of heads, especially the Black Panthers. We'll come back to that. So looking back in history, looking back in history, there was a mass uh, insurrection in Scotland in 1820 with the leaders being hung, uh, people being deported in jail, and uh, the, in in an attempt for universal suffrage, for parliamentary reform, for uh, home rule. And it really was the catalyst towards how chartism moved towards reformism rather than revolutionary insurrection because uh, don't go playing with the guns. The British army is wait waiting out there and it weighs 1,300 tons. So the British army moved in and uh, annihilated really. So Chartism, which was after many of the same demands of the Scottish insurrection in 1820, really flourished, and it flourished with a, with a temperance movement as well. The temperance movement was very allied because back in these days, uh, workers could be paid in beer. They could be paid in beer. Beer and alcohol suffused society so much that the Chartists <laughs> the Charters. So Charterism in Scotland, it really caught up in Scotland. There 100,000 people went to hear the Charters leaders in the 1830s in Glasgow Green. And, and the Charters really were, uh, initiated this idea, about, which was, and, and uh, I've discussed it with Sarah, but it's almost a Calvinistic, Presbyterian, self-elect thing about temperance. That you can't create social revolution, you can't uh, create social change 
if you're pissed out of your head. So it's quite straightforward. <laughs> it's quite straightforward. So next, next slide. So, so that's the idea of temperance movement. And the temperance movement, there was a total absence in society in the 19th century and continuing into the 20th century in uh, in, in Aberdeen. So this, I, this idea about the self-elect, this idea about the autodidact, this idea about other education being rooted uh, in sobriety because of, of really the horror and the day-to-day -day, uh, indignation people were faced with, uh, the, the way they dealt with their suffering, the way they dealt with their alienation, the way they dealt with their exploitation was uh, through, through the variable, through uh, whiskey in the mean for the Scottish working plan. So it was whiskey, whiskey right up until 1919. And then, uh, and this is, uh, I'm so grateful to Sarah Cheney that this is written also, the history of drinking, the Scottish pubs in 1700, which is actually a, a political text. And it's by Anthony Cook who, who wrote the only text on 100 years or so of, of adult education in Scotland. I really, I really recommend it because it goes into in great deal, detail the temperance movement as he does in the other text. So, how do you create social revolution? How do you create social revolution? How do you, uh, and then uh, mainly through the charter, the charters uh, position themselves with the liberals really. And until uh, Labour found, uh, working people found they didn't have any representation. So that the, uh, one of the initiators of this representation was Keir Hardy. And Keir, Keir Hardy really represented the Independent Labour Party and Dave talked to me about, about it, which is again, this is all about subjugation, the subjugation history of our people, the subjugated knowledges that, that uh, we need to unveil as other educators. When there's other educators in the uh, to do this, we need to unveil our history. We need to, uh, because it's deliberately, it's not by accident, none of this is by accident, I don't any of this is by accident, so Keir Hardy, Home rule for Scotland. Uh, <laughs> this is the founder of the Labour Party, the founder, and, and temperance reform. Temp so the temperance movement had two ambitions: uh, moral asking. So I'm going to, I'm going to persuade you to stop bevying so much. I'm going to persuade you to, or I'm going to initiate prohibition. And this is where my, my uh, lovely pal Joyce will come in. The, the, the failures of prohibition, the fa but. Uh, James Maxton, one of the leading ILP leaders, uh, moved uh, in the House of Commons uh, um, bills for prohibition. And prohibition, the, the, uh, the temperance movement did succeed in stopping drinking uh, in, uh, on a Sunday in Scotland. So it had, the, the prohibitionists had uh, some success. It wasn't just a, a, a failed uh, social movement. It wasn't a field social movement, but but it was uh, it was very identified with uh, uh, a moral kind of judgment. It was very identified. It was it was identified with the Presbyterians and almost a Calvinistic uh, kind of approach. But so especially Keir Keir Hardie was anti-monarchist. He was anti-monarchist and anti uh, the ruling class in Scotland and. He, he was uh, an advocate of temperance reform. That again, uh, it's not tear gas nor batting charge that stops us taking the city butt fast and heroin. So, boom. And then, uh, excuse the date here, 1879 to 19. <laughs> 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 We're not there yet, John. Uh, it's Extinction Rebellion, or Mike, which uh, I really recommend everybody gets stuck into, and John's Extinction Rebellion. Uh, we're not going to make uh, that figure that John uh, died in. But, uh, so, so, again, again, it's part of the subjugation. He jailed, he was jailed for the proclamation of the Soviet in 1919 in George Square, where they took English tanks, and it's nothing to do with uh, Mansfield or uh, the English party, but they, they kept Scottish tanks in uh, Pollock Shields. Pollock Shields <coughs> kept they, they wouldn't let the Scots in case there was a federation between the workers uh, and the soldiers. So it was put down uh, and he was jailed 
And I think Harry McShane, who used to go and see in the 80s, he jumped ship uh, and as an adventure. <laughs> and I don't think it, Harry was tempered, really, but John, uh, it was a great, a great uh, John McLean was sober. That's my point. That's that was just coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> John McLean was absolutely key to it. He came really from the uh, church in, uh, in, in Glasgow and was educated through the churches before really getting into a secular and Marxist analysis of economics. And when, when he was giving lectures, I mean, uh, Deb would know the numbers, but it wasn't just 54, if you know what I mean. It was packed, packed out in uh, Govan Town Hall and stuff like that. I heard there was a thousand people at some of these lectures. But it was, it was very didactic. I am being didactic. You have to have an input. Uh, but it was very, it was very uh, the words of the world they really saw. Um, and this is the thing about the Independent Labour Party. Uh, but it, the, the thing about the Independent Labour Party was opposed to the war. So that the, the irony is that the licensing bodies, the breweries, and this is where Finlay is really good, totally supported the First World War. They really supported it. They promoted their staff to go and fight in the First World War, free drink for anybody uh, in the war, and they disregarded, they whipped up this but what is similar, the continuity and change of right-wing populism, they whipped up this antagonism towards the independent Labour Party, who were the biggest tea drinkers in Scotland. <laughs> they loved drinking tea. Yeah. So, so th this, this really was the important bit to it, the, the trauma. Uh, the body keeps the score, the trauma of the song where a million people were killed, and they're not sure how many... Uh, Scots were killed there. You'll give you a count and, a, uh, and, and some pipes and some whiskey and you're that first over the top. You know what I mean? So uh, the, the breweries and the licensing board were very allied to the notion of the British state and British patriotism uh, by the ILP. Uh, in it. So moving on with the ILP and the, th the thing about the ILP, I have to I just have to say, it, was one of, it wasn't just a Christian socialist heaven on earth sort of organisation. It had a radical wing that sent, uh, that sent volunteers to fight Franco and were allied with the, from the Partido Obra Unidad uh, Marxista. And that's, that's to be matched and up there. Uh, and next, next one, wind up soon. Right, and uh, <laughs> this is the. Leave <laughs> blood, don't you? <laughs> so, uh, that, that's the uh, head of the secretariat of, of the crew, whose, whose leader was uh, tortured to death by the uh, Stalinists in Madrid uh, in 39. So, there's this, there's this evolution that's, that we're not talking about. I mean, do people, do people come across this stuff? And there's this link. Uh, to libertarian communism linked to anarcho-syndicalism that Deck talks about uh, in Glasgow uh, through the Independent Labour Party and through other education organisations. It's subjugated. We're not allowed to know. It's not by accident. So next, next one. So that's, that's Harry. And I was going to... Harry McShane uh, died in the... Uh, he died in the uh, Church of Scotland place just down the road. And he, when he... Got away from 1919, he met up with Raya Dyensk and he developed a, a form of autonomous uh, Marxism uh, close to the stuff that Deck talks about. So, quickly moving on. So, myself and Gemma had the delight really to see this, and I really recommend it. We need to get, we need to show it in Scotland. It's called The History of Crack and Smack. And what uh, Edwards is talking about, and I, I really recommend it, is one of the first things we should do is get a book called The Politics of Heroin, how the CIA are involved. It's not by accident. And the next slide, uh, uh, oh, sorry, it's the wrong, this is the wrong, the, the wrong but the next slide was about the history of the war. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll do, that'll do. It's about, the But the, the thing is, it's not by accident that in times of crisis, like the, the rise of the Black Panthers in the end of the 60s and the uh, 
uh, Vietnam War, that heroin floods the streets, it's cheaper than marijuana, it's cheaper than marijuana, and this is his argument. And then Edward's argument is, after the riots in 1981, or the resistances in the Belms and Brixton, uh, there's a flooding of crack and smack on the streets, and, and uh, the, the movement is, is, is dispelled, it's, it's, it's got rid of. So, I, I, it's not by accident, and the question is, why us? Why, why do we have the highest drug deaths in, in Western Europe, if not, if not the world? And that's where my friend and colleague Joyce will come in and take up, take up the hearing now. <laughs> Thank you very much. How do you follow that? Blue, blue. And while what, what we're doing that, I, mean, I hope I managed to make some links between all of these things. So, um, Joyce, I've been involved in uh, Dix Peel for about 30 years. I obviously was uh, yeah, a young woman when I started. Working mainly with women and children, um, women who are drug using women and, and homeless people, mainly who were using alcohol at that point. And of course, this is the crossover now: is that we don't we don't have like separate populations. We have people using lots of substances all together at the same time. But yeah, how do you, how do you follow John? I'm not sure. I'm going to offer you some invitations. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then at the end, we've got a question, and we really want to hear from some people about how we take where we're at now in terms of recovery and and also the real massive crisis that we have about drugs, particularly in this city, but specifically in Scotland. And what we do with that and what the role of adult education is within that um, and adult learning. So I'll, I'll say a wee bit. I, I do think this is a, I, I think it's a hopeful ending of the day, yes. Yeah? So, this is about pedagogies of hope um, and recovery, um, but it's also about not leaving folk behind. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm, I'm inviting. Um, yeah, okay, so John's talked a lot about this. Um, you know, the kind of background. I just love that picture, you know, lips that touch liquor shall not touch my <laughs> <laughs> You know, look at them, they're just like, what an incredible bunch of women, aren't they? Where did they get them from? So this idea of tests, and I suppose what this links to in some ways is these paradigm shifts that we've made over the last 100, 150 years of the data, and John has kind of outlined that. I mean, alcohol was itself seen as the demon, wasn't it? It was the, the substance itself that held the, the, the demonization um, came, came from the substance and, and, and allowed people to make this progress into, you know, complete destruction and, and, and it, you know, that this, you know, alcohol and drink steals children's food and all, all, you know, all these amazing <laughs> quotes about it. And of course, John also spoke a wee bit about the, the attempts to criminalise alcohol. Um, and we succeeded in criminalising drugs, but we didn't quite get there with alcohol. And in America, clearly, um, people did, uh, well, the, the American government did at the same time as cash crop growing marijuana were actually prohibiting the, the sale of alcohol. And you can see mass popular uprising against that. We demand beer! <laughs> you know, so imagine if that, if that had been done, maybe there would be popular uprising, I don't know. Maybe in Glasgow, I don't know. Um, and, and I think there's some really, and John's covered some of this, so I, I, I won't spend too, too long, because I want to get to where we're at now. But, you know, I, I think we, we saw, I, I think the, the Independent Labour Party particularly saw the drink as social waste. It was a social waste. So it, uh, and, it, and it was a, a waste of the economic, physical, mental and moral uh, elements of all of our lives. And, and it was a deeply political issue. And the invitation really comes from Keir Hardy. It, it, he, he, he says, the man who can take a glass or let it alone is under no moral obligation for the sake of the weaker brother who cannot do so, to, 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 to let it alone. So here's the invitation that Key Hard is making. Let's all not take drink, or in fact any other substances. And I want, I want to, you to sit with that invitation, because some of you, some of you 
may already be there. Yeah, so I mean, many, many, many people here, many of us in the company, yeah, who will not be taking drink or drugs. Uh, and, and, and what he's saying in response to his stepfather's own drinking, so he's an affected family member, yeah, is we should all not invite. So those heading to the double after, go on, Dasha. Uh, yeah, I'm, off, I'm just offering you all that invitation, yeah? Okay. <laughs> What, what probably <laughs> happened is that we moved from seeing the drink as the problem to almost individualising um, people as the problem. Yes, and that's what we've seen. We've criminalised drug use. We've, we've seen individuals as the problem in, the, in this kind of neoliberal uh, discourse. Um, and, 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 I, and I think what has happened is a very powerful revolution in the last... Since 2008, really, since, since our drug strategy changed, a revolution of recovery, yeah? And we have some people here, we've got uh, Anne-Marie from the, from the recovery consortium as well. Um, I couldn't possibly, I can could, I, I could spend 15 hours telling you what the recovery movement's doing. It's vast, it's huge, it's epic, it's, it's amazing, yeah? It's absolutely, there's communities, there's colleges, there's cafes, there's hubs, there's a whole community being, there's a, a new community being established down in, in Ayrshire, um, about people living together in community and, and you know, I, I just can't begin to tell you the amount of adult education, the amount of learning that's happening that we probably need to capture much more robustly actually. What's going on? What are people doing? We need to capture that really, really, really strongly. We are, we've created experts by experience and we're literally building communities.